Hi, my name is Josh Verhagen. I was born and raised in Nenana, Alaska. I've always loved our town's location, scenery, culture, people, and history. I've dreamt of going back into the 1920s and experiencing what this town used to be like at its peak. So many significant things happen right here that the world ought to know about and share in our fascination. I'm not alone in expressing my love for what this little city has been and envision all it could be in the future. Since I was a kid, I've been thinking about the potential here. Now, I'm the mayor of Ninana and I'm working to share my dreams and inspiration with others. So many have joined together in a unified vision to turning our little city around and we've been making so much progress. I feel like Ninana is the perfect town for your show. We've got big plans and big dreams to restore much of what's been lost and to create some new things that will inspire, inspire other communities and people around the world. Here is our story. Ninana is an Athabascan name that means a good place to camp between two rivers. Long ago, indigenous people of Alaska realized Ninana's strategic location and have used this spot to fish, camp, and live for many generations. Unlike coastal Alaska, interior Alaska was fairly untouched by settlers until the early 1900s. By 1902, the Washington, Alaska military cable and telegraph system came right through Ninana on its way west to Fort Gibbons and all the way to Nome. Due partly to the increased number of passerbys and laborers on the Colossal Telegraph Project, the first non-native settler, Jim Duke, constructed a roadhouse and lived out his days in Indiana. In 1905, St. Mark's Episcopal Mission was founded. Native Alaskan youth from the surrounding areas came to attend school there. It included a chapel, hospital, dormitory, gardens, and more. In 1912, President Taft authorized a commission to survey a railroad route from Seward to Fairbanks, and by 1914, the U.S. Congress funded the project. The commission began staking out town sites along the route. In 1916, the town site of Ninana was surveyed and lots auctioned to the public. 344 lots were sold for $135,525 in one day. With becoming the Northern Division for the construction of the Alaska Railroad, and housing 700 railroad workers, Inanna became a boom town. Between August of 1916 and August of 1917, the growth was enormous. In 2017 was the official start of the now 102-year-old tradition of the Ninana Ice Classic. It started in Duke's Roadhouse as railroad workers decided to place bets on when the ice would break up in the springtime. They placed a wooden tripod on the ice, tied a string to a clock on the bank, and when the tripod moved and stopped the clock, the person who guessed the closest time won the jackpot. By 1921, Ninana was incorporated as a city. The construction of the Tanana River Bridge at Inanna was no small task. At the time, it was the world's second longest single-span trestle bridge. The completion of the Tanana River Bridge at Inanna was also the final completion of the Alaska Railroad from Seward to Fairbanks. A ceremony was held in Inanna as U.S. President Warren Harding drove a golden spike. In 1925, due to diphtheria outbreak in Nome, a serum is trained from Anchorage to Ninana, and the serum is then relayed 700 miles from Ninana to Nome by dog sled. Wild Bill Shannon and his team, led by Blackie, were the first of 21 relays. He had been approached by Post Office Inspector Wetzel, who asked him if he would take the package to Tolomona the next day. It was 40 below zero, but when Shannon inquired as to the nature of the delivery, he decided that he'd better get going that night. When the serum arrived by train, Shannon headed out at 9 p.m. for a 32-mile trip, arriving in Tolavana by 3 a.m. at 62 below zero. Among the other 20 relays were renowned Leonard Sepulveda and 
his lead dog Togo, and gunner Kaysen with Balto. The Serum Run was the inspiration for the Iditarod dog sled race that still goes on today. Later that year, Balto came through Nienna on his way to Central Park in New York City. The SS Nienna Sturmwheeler, a five-deck Western River paddleship, 237 feet in length, was built on the banks in Nienna and launched in 1933. In the early 1930s, the federal government offered to either establish reservations or hand out 160-acre allotments to Native Alaskan tribes. Chief Thomas of Nina said, All us Alaskan Natives and other Indians will agree with us. We don't want to be put on reservations. You people of the government, you people don't go around enough to learn the way the Indians are living. So we want to talk to you, explain our living to you. Unlike the rest of the nation, Alaska chose not to create reservations for Native Americans, and today, 40% of Nina's population is Native Athabascan. In 1936, a devastating fire takes out 14 buildings on A Street. Of all the businesses devastated by the fire, only a couple chose to stay and rebuild, including Cog Hill Store, which is still in business today. Someone said this fire is one thing that Nenana has never fully recovered from. In 1948, Ninana was hit by a flood that caused others to leave, and the population continued to dwindle. The 1950s was a transitional period, as diesel barge line fleets replaced steamboats. Ninana would be known as the barging hub of the interior for the next 60 years. In 1967, an even bigger flood put the town of Ninana underwater. The state of Alaska conducted several comprehensive studies to relocate the town site. As the proposals were all too expensive, they chose to do a retainment wall and build up the roads and many of the properties. Later that year, the Tanana River Highway Bridge was completed, connecting Ninana to Fairbanks and the road system. By 1971, the Parks Highway is completed from Fairbanks to Anchorage. It's now 2020, and a new bridge leading out west over the Nenana River is months away from completion. This bridge will open up new possibilities for Nenana and the future of this area.
I think Minan is a very special town because of the um, interactions between the people and the cultures. Minan is a fun, caring place. Mm -hmm. It's a town with a lot of historical significance to the interior of Alaska. You know, it's a small, kind of half village, half city. Edmund Lord made me in a unique. Clearly that were out in the front yard. He sticks this, this nice big prime salmon and flips him over from his truck, truck in the back of ours. And he goes, welcome to me, Anna. I love the quiet, the laid back, the sense of family. We have people here for, um, many, many, many generations. And I think that sets us apart. We have a friendly mindset, you know, everybody's friendly towards you. And you just have a feeling that you belong. Yeah. This Where used to be the hub of Alaska because we had river, we had um, boats, we had the railroad, and we had airports. Yeah. It's a hub of transportation. Yeah. We are at a prime location. We are at the crossroads that most places would love to have a, a, a setting like that. It's just all the modes of transportation for how small of a town we have that is right here. I mean, with the river being right there, and as well as the railroad and having an airport and the highway access, it's just something that's very unique and has been a reason why there has been a lot of history and culture in this area is because it's the crossroads. I can see people come back to Ninana after being here like for being away for a couple of years, just tourists. And they've told me that we were in Alaska and we had to come to Ninana. And I think we just have a very, very special nature to our town. A couple of things that I've heard like from our potlatches and um, different community events that we have, a lot of people talk about, well, Minana does it the best. From the time when we first got here and until now, we've been to a lot of potlatches at which we were able to learn from them how important people are to each other. They do that mostly because of funeral, they have funeral potlatches. When somebody dies, people will go out and they, they gather the food out in the woods, go for moose or fish, any, um, um, in our language we call it Anna Jababa. It's our native food. We have guys that go out moose hunting, we have people that are bringing in fish, you have women that are, that are cooking, um, and so you just accommodate, you know, a couple hundred people that show up, everybody brings a dish and and um, you you eat good, you eat well, you feed everybody. And then we have some native dancing and singing. Then we have the 4th of July, which has been going on since at least that long, since the early 1900s. And it was started by the railroad workers and it's an old fashioned 4th of July where um, people, I mean, we have, a parade and there's a sawdust pile um, filled with money and there are cream pies to eat with your face your hands have to be behind your back um, there's foot races and three-legged races and egg and a spoon races adult tricycle races first prize gets a dollar second prize gets 50 cents and everybody gets a quarter I mean fourth of July they can't beat it in the summertime the kids do have culture camp um, here in Indiana and it's a couple weeks long, and they they learn um, Benti Kanaga, which is the native dialect for Nana, and they learn singing and dancing and uh, counting numbers, how to introduce themselves um, in the native language. Now that's something I don't know how to do, but my granddaughter can do it. Number one, uh, you know, the serum run. Uh, this is the home of the last great race. Uncle Al John, he said he remembered that he was five years old. It started, they, he remembered that taking the serum off the train it was minus 55 below. But Bill Shannon put it on the slip and took off top. The 
this here man, started this here man. And because of that, they removed his ball to the dogs. Another one came up, Togo. Mm -hmm. it's, it's brand new one. This is the completion spot of the railroad where they drove the golden spike. President Hardy drove the golden spike in across the river and, you know, was here in our town. And I think with that, the depot and everything else, um, you know, that those are pretty big historic things for us. Well, my grandfather came to Alaska in 1907 and walked from Valdez to Fairbanks to work in the um, gold fields. And um, in 1916, he bought into a store here in Nenana and my family ran the store up until um, the beginning of this year. So we were at the store for 103 and a half years. And the other one is our general store that we have, Cog Hills, over 100 years old, and it's some uh, a community center. You come in and that's where you learn about what's going on in town. Well, Drive Classic is something that started back in 1917, and uh, it's, uh, Bit of a people betting on when the ice is going to go out. There's a tripod set out on the ice with a string that goes to the bank, and people guess on when the time is going to go out. You know, like April 23rd at 11:45 p.m. And then there's always a big jackpot or whatever. A couple of guys from the railroad went and put some sticks up out, made a tripod, and everybody was betting on it to see when it would go out. Well, it finally became a thing. And um, so now uh, every spring, um, our Indiana Ice Classic, they'll put out their red cans and they'll send sell tickets. And they got these big old books with all the names from the previous year. So I always tell people when I sell them a ticket is uh, you're getting your names in the Alaska history books. We have a tripod days and uh, we have big festivities going on and they actually raise the tripod up on the river and um, then we sit and wait wait for it to thaw. Main Street was much busier when I was a child. Um, and I would really like to see Main Street build up again and the store that my family has just sold. There's been talk that we might, that the new owner would, is going to try to restore it to look like the old, old store with, you know, an awning and things like that. The general store, I mean, that is in need of some repair. And we've got the Civic Center. There's a few, few big projects out there that would really make uh, a difference for the visitors being able to see the history and keeping it, keeping the history. And they have that depot still standing. Mm -hmm. um, that could be, that's one of the buildings that could be. I would like to see the depot restored. Kind of the rail depot, I think, probably would be probably the one that would bring most. That would be probably cool to see. A river port. We have empty lots now. We have um, buildings that are old, um, and but they have a lot of history. Too bad the old theater house is not here anymore. The um playground area over there is is kind of an eyesore um, with the basketball courts and the tennis courts and stuff like that. The other improvement I would love to see is the basketball courts down by the school. They are played on every single night of the summer, every night. You know, it'd be kind of cool if you could just get a dozen picnic tables. Picnic tables draw people. Why pick Nina? One, everybody loves Alaska. Well, you're not gonna get it better anywhere else. Nina is a pretty awesome place. Because we're small, we're friendly, and I think that we just have the right attitude going on right now in our town. There's a lot of culture emanating from this village, from this town. We find ways of doing things. As it is, we get 50,000 visitors through the town a year, and that can skyrocket as more places are available to sit down and eat and relax and enjoy the scenery around. We, we need something to um, show, show the tour companies that 
Ninana, the, their guests have to stop in Ninana. If they miss Ninana, they're gonna miss Alaska. And that is what we're trying to do with the projects that we've slowly been working on and that this show would help us do. We have now three bridges, almost. And that's gonna open up a ton of new land out there. I think this, we're primed for a takeoff and I would just love to see it happen. Come enjoy our little town and see what we're about.